Hey, good morning. Um, just a quick update on the um, Botborn project. Uh, it's going pretty well. I am doing this way slower than the PlayStation 2 or any of the controllers or the guitar, purely because those projects I needed to do because of, you know, everything. And it was just sort of to keep my mental health in check. Whereas uh, now everything's, uh, particularly at work, calmed down a lot. Um, I'm just taking my time with it. Like I'm working on it a couple of times a month. So it is progressing. It's basically done at this point and there will be a video coming soon. And then I can start getting into actually doing playthroughs with it. Um, I've even bought a snazzy new webcam to capture the, uh, footage of me using it, uh, to see it in real time. So you will see the screen and what I'm doing with my hands in real time. None of this like janky mobile phone nonsense. Um, so yeah, that's all coming, going really well, really happy with it. Been a bit of a nightmare, but I'm basically there. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different. I've been um, thinking a little bit more, and I know I keep going on about it, but it is one of my favourite games of all time, um, that Turrican collection, which did, I hasten to add, get an update. So the cheats menu now kind of works, but it's still janky, and... Um, the uh, sound options have been changed and updated and they work better but again the thing still needs a few patches so once it's like a state where i'm like oh, i can do a follow-up video i will um but yeah i was thinking a little bit more about that and how the additions that they've put into a game with no source code like the source code for that game is gone and has been gone for decades um how you can take a finished game and add this wrapper around it which adds so much more things like the maps things like the soundtrack can like squish the actual game down into a tiny little square and then fill out the rest so you can have this huge 16 by 9 experience it's it got me thinking and specifically thinking about another game by the same publisher so strictly limited are a small german company and they're doing what a lot of uh, small companies in the retro market are doing now, which is to take old IPs or retro IPs or forgotten IPs or abandoned IPs and acquire licenses, get all the sort of legal stuff together and then release them on physical media, whether that be a disc or a cartridge or in some cases hardwired into a console. Now, a company called Analog make FPGA console clones and one of the ones they did I think it was called I, I forget the name it was the analog uh, FPGA Super Nintendo clone I think it was no the NT was the NES clone but whatever the um, Super Nintendo clone was when that thing was released it came with a game built into it and the game that was built into it was Super Turrican 2 which was never released like Factor 5 did not release that game and um, Strictly Limited had the license, they worked on it, and it was bundled with that analog Super Nintendo clone. There was another machine called the Analog SG, which was a Sega Genesis stroke Mega Drive FPGA console clone that came out, I think, in 2018, 2019, maybe somewhere around that time. And they did the same thing. There was a game built into it. And that game was a game called Ultra Core. Now, it, if you haven't heard of that game, don't worry about it. It was never released. And it was a game made by um, Digital Illusions. Now, Digital Illusions were a very, very high-profile um, game developer on the Amiga. They made Pimble Dreams, Pimble Fantasies. Um solid European developer. They still make games today, although their most recent game is getting a bit of flack. And their um, one of their last games as well. Uh, I mean, when, when the law gets involved and when governments get involved, you know you've done something wrong. But anyway, 30 years ago, they were making really, really, really top quality Amiga games. So... There was another game, very, very similar to Super Turrican 2, 
which was unreleased. Now, um, that game was called Ultra Core, but at the time it was called Hardcore. And according to Wikipedia, this game was... I don't know whether it was designed for, like from the ground up, or was ported to. Um, the Amiga, the Mega Drive, and apparently the Mega CD. Although, even though the wiki says Amiga, this thing has got CD32 written all over it. And there's a lot of crossover between things like the CD32 and the Mega Drive and the CD32 and the Mega CD. The thing is that that console, in fact, all three of those consoles, a bullet was put into them around about the time uh, Ultra Core, at the time Hardcore, was to be released. And that bullet was called the PlayStation. So, Cygnosis got cold feet and basically canned the project when... And again, this is according to the wiki, it was, quote, almost finished. Fast forward 30 years, and Analog are putting out this FPGA Mega Drive clone. And a deal was struck up with uh, Strictly Limited, I guess because of the Super Nintendo, you know, Turrican, Super Turrican 2 uh, built-in game went so well that they just went back to the people that they know and said, hey, you, you want to do this again? So why not? You've released a, a brand new old game on a brand new old console. Makes sense, right? Um, but then Ultra Core was released further. So Ultra Core was supposed to be put out by Cygnosis. Cygnosis and all the IPs that Cygnosis owned are now owned by Sony. So they own things like Lemmings, they own things like Shadow of the Beasts, and even though they treat Lemmings like dirt, there are still a few good Sony Lemmings games, and I really like that Shadow of the Beast remake. So Sony do still pay some reverence to the Cygnosis IPs, providing that they can get someone, or someone is, you know, willing enough to take on those IPs. But there are so many Cygnosis IPs that just basically got left in the dirt. And Ultra Core was one of them. So Ultra Core, Cygnosis got cold feet, canned it. Purely because the PlayStation was coming out and why are you going to release something for the Mega CD or the CD32? I mean, it doesn't make sense. Um, so yeah, so Ultra Core was bundled and put out. Now Ultra Core was like pressed onto a, a Mega Drive cartridge. So you, if you didn't buy the FPGA console, you could still buy Ultra Core. And it came in a lovely box and it was on a printed cartridge with a nice like colour manual and all bundled together like Strictly Limited do. And here's where I have an issue. Ultra Core was put on the PlayStation Store for the PS4 and the Vita. And I think there's a Switch port as well. The problem that I've got is that for all of the detail and... And remember, it does need patches, but for all of the hard work and reverence that was paid to that Turrican anthology considering it has no source code when they had Ultra Core not only did they have the license and the source code they even managed to hire some of the guys that originally worked on it from DICE way back so they had the programmers, the source code they had everything right when the game was almost finished and canned, and then apparently they, all these guys worked on it and put it out, it certainly doesn't feel like it. Now, I'll be the first to admit, I know nothing about game development. Game development, I imagine, is an absolute nightmare. I cannot imagine it is easy for one second, and the people that work in it do phenomenal, you know, a phenomenal job to get this stuff out, and no one can ever ever say that game developers are lazy, right? And I'm never going to say that. However, the the term finished for this product really can't be applied. I've I've been playing the game for a while now and obviously I've brought, you know, a video out saying everything I love about that Turrican anthology. I think that the Ultra Core release is a textbook case of how not to release classic retro titles. And while I don't think 
the Turrican anthology is because again it needs patching it needs a bit of work and the fact that it's on two blu-rays when it's you know the file sizes are like minimal so I don't think that Turrican is the textbook's way to you know to release retro games but I think that Ultra Core lessons have to be learned about how not to release retro games in a preservation sense so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, show you exactly what I, I could tell you. And again, making a list wouldn't be hard, but I think it's better to actually show you what I'm talking about and um, explain some of the ways where I think that this product really does, like really does fall short compared to things like the Turrican Anthology. So yeah, let's have a look at it. Ultra Core cool for the PlayStation 4. So what even is Ultra Core? The simplest explanation is that it's a run and gun shooter. Now, as soon as someone says that, the instant, you know, go-to game is Contra. And really this doesn't play like Contra at all. It actually plays like an old um DOS and Amiga game called Abuse where you moved with a keyboard and aimed with a mouse. The mechanics of moving and shooting on this like platform game uh, very, very, very similar to Ultra Core. So if you've played Abuse, it's it feels like that. Now, the one thing I want to put across is that even though I'm going to point out a lot of things that I think this game does poorly, that's not to say that I don't like it. I actually think that the movement and the combat and the the general flow of the game is really, really good. It is a lot of fun to move and shoot and platform in this game. It's just the fact that it's so disappointing because it could have been perfect. Um, and it's let down by silly things, but it's not just one or two. It's a lot of silly things letting it down. Now, I think it's only fair to preface every single criticism I have of this, and there, there will be a few, by saying that Ultra Core on the PlayStation 4 has never received a patch has never received an update it, in fact it says it right there on the title screen that it is version 1.0 i have checked all update history it has never ever received a patch the game has been available for two years at this point and has still never been updated so the first thing that you'll notice when you start ultra core is how loud the volume is now, a lot of games have like a splash screen or something that's, you know, meant to meant to wake you up and whatnot, but it's not it's not the fact that it's like a, a, a loud uh, um, like a stab or it's a loud, you know, sound effect or something like that. The entire game volume is for whatever reason so many decibels louder than anything else on the PlayStation. It is ridiculous. Um in fact, have a look at this. Okay, and welcome back to Janko Vision. Um, I could just record the footage and just show it to you, but I think that to truly appreciate how extreme the volume is on this, it needs to be in like shown in this room setting. So what I'm quickly gonna do is just show you, I mean, my TV is set to a moderate level for this time of the morning. Like, look at that volume slider. It's not even nearly a third of the way up. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show you uh, what um, Disney Plus considers a reasonable volume and then show you what Ultra Core considers a reasonable volume. So let's just have a quick look at this trailer. Okay, so first okay. off. So we've got dialogue and we've got music and it's a trailer. So generally they tend to be, you know, quite boosted uh, audially. All right. Let me show you Ultra Core. Right. Exactly the same. Change nothing. Volume the same. Here we go. begin to explain to you how loud this is. It is insane that this was allowed to happen. What the hell? I can't 
can't believe that that was allowed to happen. <laughs> so yeah, not only is the volume incredibly loud, it serves as a perfect indication of what is to come because the main menu, other than the option that says start game, every single option in there has something wrong with it. So the first option, the sound options, you can pick what you want. You can pick whether you want the original sort of like Yamaha chip sound and sound effects and music that way, or if you just want the sound effects or just want the music. And they've even added what they call a CD soundtrack, which I'm assuming was for the Mega CD or the um, CD32, which is a nice addition. However, the the it's not the sound quality that's the problem. It's the weird programming that they've added to it. So, for example, when you turn on the game, not only is it very, very, very loud, the game will play the audio from the game and then it will play the intro music once. Once it's finished doing that, it stops. It doesn't loop and it never comes back. As soon as you turn on the game, you realize that the attention to detail is lacking and unfortunately, it doesn't get much better. You'll also notice that there is no volume control. So not only is the music incredibly loud, and you can pick whether you want sound effects or music, you cannot change the volume at all. There is no volume controls. Below that you have the high score table, which would be really good except that none of your high scores save. So every time you get a high score in the game, and then restart the game, all your high scores are gone. So looking at the screen, one of the things that becomes very apparent is the complete lack of any kind of options. So as well as the sparse sound options, there are no way to change or even view the controls. Now, I understand that back in the day, a lot of the control you know, instructions and things like that would be in the manual. So this being a you know, port of an old game, that's completely understandable. However, even back in the day, a lot of Mega Drive games had customizable controls. You could go into the options and set your A, B, and C functions to whatever was on screen, whether it be fire, jump, things like that. That wasn't uncommon, and it's just not here. Another option that is incredibly conspicuous by its absence is any way to load a previously saved game, and that's because UltraCore uses a password system. But even then, there are inherent problems with that. So... Um, the passwords aren't universal. They're a procedurally generated series of numbers and letters based on your lives and your score and everything else. Unfortunately, that string of numbers and letters is very, very, very long and all completely different. Uh, UltraCore also uses a very strange kind of futuristic font. So you're putting in this long string of numbers and letters in this strange font. And while you're doing that, the string of numbers and letters are pulsing from dark to light, making it incredibly difficult to put it in, combined with the fact that there is no on-screen prompt as to which uh, button on the controller inputs the letter and which button on the controller deletes the letter. There are no on-screen prompts whatsoever. So the amount of times that I have put in the wrong password or accidentally entered the wrong letter is way more than I'd like to admit. And the fact that every single time I finish a stage, it gives me a 20 string procedurally generated passcode that I then have to scribble down on a piece of paper means that in my house, on my coffee table right now, there is a notepad that makes me look like the frigging Zodiac Killer. The last option notable by its absence, as well as any kind of volume options or control options, is a difficulty option. Now, it wasn't uncommon for Mega Drive games back in the day to have some kind of difficulty option. And um, UltraCore doesn't have that. The game has one difficulty, and I'm not saying that UltraCore is very difficult. In fact, if anything, it's actually really easy. The difficulty with UltraCore comes in its technical downfalls, which I'll get to in a minute. But it's very, very strange that a game like this would only have one difficulty setting. Now we've looked at the main menu, let's have a quick look at the gameplay. Now, like I said before, the actual mechanical process of running and gunning and blowing up the robots and shooting and dodging bullets is a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. 
the fact that everything explodes into lots of pieces, there's lots of particles on screen, and you've got that really chunky, crunchy Yamaha sound that's going on at the same time is really, really good. Plus, the game looks great. Like, it really does have that European uh, 90s platformer look. It is a really nice looking game. It's everything around it. So, first things first, when you press the start button, it literally says pause. There is no mid-game menu. There is no way... For example, let's say you've put in the password on your scribble down piece of paper, but you've put in the wrong password. Well, in most games, you would just hit start, hit main menu, go back to the main menu, put in a new password. Not a problem. Um, with UltraCore, there is no mid-game menu. There is no way to go back, and you have to stop thinking about this as in, in terms of a Mega Drive game back from 1994. This is a PlayStation 4 game in 2022. Like, it's 2022. What do people want in 2022? All we really want is an effective way to save and load a game. What we want is a way of effectively going back to the menu without having to and this is, I am not joking, without having to go back to the PlayStation dashboard every time you want to restart the level. Like, it's insane that you would need to do that. Um, say, for example, you picked uh, sound effects by accident. You actually want sound effects and music, or the other way around. Like, you, you don't really want to listen to the music anymore, so you just want the sound effects. Well, too bad, you've started the game. You have to go all the... You have to basically shut down the application. Go all the way back to the PlayStation dashboard and restart the game again. It shouldn't be like that. There is also no way to restart the level. Now, Ultra Core is a game about collecting things. They give you a lovely little statistic screen at the end of each level saying how many of the one-ups that uh, are in the level, how many you got, and more importantly, how many you missed. You're also collecting these coins as well. So how many of those did you collect and how many of those did you miss? And there are... Um, trophies i think attached to getting all of them now say you miss a couple of coins or some fall down a pit too bad you are going back to the playstation dashboard and restarting the application from scratch there is no way to just restart it's bananas like it really really is even you've got to think of all of the uh, collections for sonic the hedgehog of which there have been millions like we can put a menu in that to go back to the start we can restart the ROM, we can do anything. Even in most emulators you would have stuff. It's crazy the fact that there is nothing in this game. Another thing as well, and remembering as well that back in the day this may not have been an issue, but in 2022 we have reached a point where this is very, very, very important. If you suffer with photosensitive epilepsy, UltraCore is not, I repeat, not the game for you. The game is about exploring, like I said, finding all those hidden one-ups, finding all those coins. Every time you discover a hidden area, the screen flashes white. Here is a 30 second clip of unbroken gameplay, and in that time, the screen, the entire screen flashes white three times. So, whereas in 2022 that would have been picked up on and maybe toned down or toned back or, you know, finding another way of doing it, they haven't changed anything. This is exactly the same from 1994. Like, just because you're re-releasing a game doesn't mean that if you've got the original source code, if you've got the original programmers, this is the kind of thing that needs to be picked up on. Now, like I've said already, UltraCore is an exploration platformer, and there are a lot of these on uh, home computers and consoles, especially in Europe. Um, games like... Turrican, obviously, games like Switchblade 2, games like Gods, you know, that kind of thing, where you were incentivized to go around the levels and pick up every single gem or every single coin and explore every nook and cranny and find little hidden areas. That was very popular in Europe at the time. UltraCore has this annoying feature of only being able to access some parts of the level if you jump on top of an enemy. If you shoot that enemy and that enemy is dead, section of the level that's now inaccessible um, in the same way as if you miss a coin or you miss a one-up or you you go oh i'll just come back for that in a minute i'll just run into this door some of the doors allow you to come back 
and some don't. So some of these doors, and again, they're not marked, they're not identified any way at all. You can go through a door, pick up something, and then come back out, and some doors you can go through, and that's it, you're done. And because there is no save feature, and because there is no way of restarting the level, and because there is no mid-menu, you know, uh, 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 you know, a mid-game menu where you can just hit restart and try the level again, you have to start the entire game again. And even then, you just can't hit restart. You have to go back to the PlayStation dashboard, shut down the application, and restart the game. Just because you missed one coin three hours into a game. It's insane. There are also these shops on the wall. And you're like, great, I've been collecting all these blue coins throughout the game. Here's a place where I can spend them. This is really, really cool. Even then, there are problems. So, the... Uh, one of the options that you've got is to spend a coin and get some health. And you're like, awesome. So you hit the button, hit the button, hit the button. But unfortunately, when you get to 100%, it, what originally I thought was a um, an integer overflow. So for example, if you have a range on, uh, say a computer program has a range from 0 to 100%. If you get to 101%, it won't go up and it won't go above that threshold. It will just cycle back around to zero. That's what I thought was happening. So I thought, great, I've wasted all these coins and it's punished me by taking all my life back. What I didn't realize because, again, I just didn't realize it at the time because it doesn't tell you, it just plays a little sound effect. You're actually getting an extra life. But once you've done it once, and you think that you've, you know, like a, like I said, it was an integer overflow and that now I've got less coins and less life. Once you've done that once, you never pick that option again. Um, one of the other things that I find really, really, really annoying, and this is the, this is the one thing where I'm like, I am absolutely convinced that it wasn't finished, is there are really clever little um, platforming sections. So... Your character has weight, and when your character jumps on a platform, the platform will actually lower, and then the platform will spring back, and if you jump at the right moment, you're actually getting extra height, and I'm like, that's really cool. It feels like, um, almost like the weight that you would feel in Pugsy, like if you remember the game Pugsy, everything in that game sort of had kind of, almost like, um, like an approximation of physics, like everything sort of felt heavy, and it's like that, it's really, really cool. Unfortunately, there are problems. So some of the platforming is incredibly tedious because of that. You do learn to adapt and you do learn some of the platforming jumps, but up until that point, it is very, very, very frustrating. And then you get to level five. Now, level five is hours into the game, like absolutely hours into the game. And like I said before, with the missable items, you're encouraged to look for coins, you're encouraged to look for one-ups, and if you miss them, too bad, you're starting the game again. This is different. There is a section on level 5 where you need the enemies to be able to access the further bit of the level. Herein lies the problem. If you've killed every enemy, you are now stuck. So your options are... Kill yourself on some kind of environmental hazard like a spike or a lava pit and whatnot. Do that enough times. Lose all your lives. Go to the continue screen. Get a continue. It respawns the enemies. You try again. Right? Here's the thing. There are no environmental hazards. There is no pit to throw yourself into. There are no spikes to throw yourself onto to lose all your lives. So you're like, oh, right. Well, I'll just let the timer run out. You, the timer runs out, it give, you takes one of your lives, gives you a new life, and it gives you 500 seconds on the clock. And you're like, fine, okay. That would be fine if I had two or three lives. At that point in the game, uh, and the second time I got up to that point in the game, I had 43 lives. All right? 43 lives at 500 seconds each. Now, there is no way to burn those lives. You literally need to let the timer count down so you can get to a continue. To burn those 43 lives by letting the timer count down would have taken nearly six hours. Six hours because I can't make a jump because all the enemies are dead. Now, I have viewed 
uh, walkthroughs and I viewed like speed runs of this game running on the Mega Drive cartridge. And that jump is accessible, like really accessible. You just pop on the platform, up you get. And I think it goes back to the 50 hertz thing where because the PlayStation has no way of outputting 50 hertz, it is doing 60 hertz. I think some of the timing's wrong. So some of those jumps are really, really tight, but for whatever reason, that jump on level five is completely impossible. And you are so close to the final boss. And again, there is no way to restart. There is no way to, to restart the, uh, the level. There's no way to go back to the main menu. You literally have to shut down the application, shut down the game, go back to the PlayStation dashboard, and boot the game up from scratch. And there is no way around it. That is the epitome of what is wrong with this game. It is just not finished. That kind of thing should have been picked up in playtesting and simply wasn't. And I understand if people are going, well, you know, that jumps, you just got to do it further. You just got to try harder. You just got to give it many times. That, it is, that jump is impossible. I'm using a wired controller with zero HDMI lag. It is completely unacceptable. So can I recommend that anyone play Ultra Core? It's really, really disappointing to say this, but no. I, I genuinely cannot recommend anyone play this. It just is so, so unfinished. I mean, there is no other way to say it. It just it feels completely unfinished. There are so many other options. So many other options for really, really good, high-quality run-and-gun games on the PlayStation Store, on the Nintendo Switch, like pretty much everywhere now. Um, a great example, a Turrican aside, a great example is Gunlord. Like, Gunlord is the same price as Ultra Core and is a far, far better package with way more options. It's just, it's such a shame. It's such a disappointment. Ultra Core could be, could be excellent. It's from a, a classic developer with a lot of pedigree behind it, has really, really fun shooting mechanics, great crunchy sound, but it is just so unfinished. And I think, like I said at the beginning, I think it is a textbook example of how not to re-release a retro title.